Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Red Roses and Butterfly, and I'm gonna be sipping a little Cabernet. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 canvas. Uh, you can get this at any of your local craft stores or you can order it online, and of course you can switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm using acrylic paint today. The colors I'm using are titanium white, green oxide, deep yellow, fire red, burnt umber, which I'll probably refer to as brown, fluorescent orange, and purple violet. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using three brushes today. The sizes I'm using are a number 14 filbert brush, a number 12 round brush, and a number two round brush. And I'll probably call these small, medium, and large throughout the process. And of course you can switch those up a little bit if you want. Um, you are gonna need, also need a cup of water for washing your brushes and a paper towel for drying your brushes. And I will be putting in the description below um, text step-by-step um, -step instructions that you can print um, and also a downloadable image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as your reference as we go along. And that's all you're gonna need. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're using our large filbert brush. We're gonna be coloring the background. Um, I'm gonna be using three colors, white, green, and yellow. And when I do this, I'm gonna be using mostly white, but every now and again, I'll pick up a little yellow or pick up a little bit of green. Um, and I'm gonna be applying it in this circular fashion. My goal here is to get a background that kind of resembles an out of focus um, foliage, I guess, out in the wilderness. Um, typically, if you see a photograph of a flower, which is what we're gonna be painting, it's usually a really close up picture of that flower. And in the background, you'll see almost like these color splotches um, which indicate that the things in the background you're seeing are out of focus. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going for in this particular background. Um, every now and again, I'm gonna pick up just white and that's gonna give me almost like a bright spot where maybe the sun is trying to peek through whatever trees or um, leaves are in the background here that we are putting out of focus. Um, and I'm not really thinking too hard about this. I'm just really going for some light spots, some light yellow spots, maybe some light green spots, maybe some light white spots. Um, but you can really have this as light or as dark as you want. Um, and you can have it as, for lack of a better term, as splotchy as you want. Um, Um, that way, you know, it's all going to look very natural when you're putting it behind these roses. So we're using complementary colors. The yellow and the green are really going to work well with the reds that we're going to have in those flowers. So it doesn't matter the intensity of this color background. Um, I guess the lighter you have it, the more those, those flowers are gonna pop out and be more of the focal point. But if you want those flowers to be a little bit more subtle and you want them to kind of blend in with the background, you could certainly have a darker background. I'm gonna get mine to go a little bit darker down here at the bottom as if it's almost you know in the shadows, but you don't have, that's not a necessity either um, because it might be coming from a different viewpoint wherever we're we're seeing these flowers from. I'm um, just gonna finish up this little corner up here 
And we are going to switch brushes to that medium round brush, the number 12. So when you get this background all nice and filled in, you can put this large brush away in your water cup and you can take out the medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our flower buds or the flowers part. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using red and brown and I'm gonna use both of those colors on my brush at the same time. And the reason I'm doing this is I want a nice deep dark base for these flowers so when we go to put on the petals later they'll have some nice dimension. Um, and when you're doing this, the brown and the red are gonna be kind of see-through and a little bit translucent. Don't worry about that. You don't have to worry about getting a perfect coverage on this coat. This is just gonna be the base coat. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different shapes for the, for the flower. Um, think of this as they can be in any growth position from a bud to fully opened. So if you, I'm gonna show you in progression those type of shapes that we're gonna use. So if you wanna do a bud, you're gonna do something kind of like a little teardrop. And that's all you need to do for that shape. And you can make them various sizes and various directions. If you want it to be like it's almost ready to open, what you'll do is you're gonna do the same teardrop, only this time you're gonna kind of flatten the point of it a little bit and then just color it in. And then if you want a fully open um, flower, you can, you're gonna almost do it really wide at the top and then you're gonna make it, oh, almost like a circle, I guess, but a little bit pointy at that bottom and then just color it in. And you can do as many of these shapes as you want. You're gonna watch, I'm gonna put a whole bunch of little buds all over the place. I'm gonna put them in various sizes. You could even get wild and crazy um, and put one in front of another. Um, so if I wanted to do that, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do them kind of midway up here. I'm gonna go low here and then I'm gonna do a lot really high up there. Um, just so you understand the um, kind of the flow of the shapes I'm gonna do. So here's one that I'm gonna have maybe open and then maybe I'm gonna have a little, a little bud in front of it. And later on when I'm doing my details, I'll be able to enhance this a little bit, but you can have a lot of fun. I'm gonna do a really big one here. This one's gonna be fully open. And again, every time I go to load my brush, I am picking up both red and brown. And I'm not really concerned about how perfect the coverage is because I know that I'm gonna have a whole bunch of um, other things on top of this, i.e. the petals that are going to cover up any spots that are not fully painted in. And I'm just gonna kinda keep going here until I feel like I have enough flowers, I think I'm gonna do maybe a bigger bud in through here, maybe one that's gonna be tipped over here. Again, you can see I'm kind of putting them in various shapes. That one I think I'm gonna have open just a little bit, which gives me that flat kind of tip there. Um, and have fun with this. Make as many as you want, make them, you know, big or small, it's really up to you how many flowers that you wanna have on here. Um, and now once I've got as many as I think I want, um, what I'm gonna do next, I am going to be using this same brush, but I'm going to wash and dry it. So when you get your shapes on there, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, what we're gonna do for the next step, we're using our medium brush. We're gonna be doing the stems and grass for the um, flowers. So I'm gonna use four colors. I'm using brown, green, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna start with my stems first, and I'm gonna make those right now a little bit darker. I might add a little highlight to them later, but right now I'm just gonna use green, yellow, 
and brown on my brush at the same time. And how I'm gonna do this every, um, at the bottom of the roses, they have these little um, leaves that come out of them. So that's where I'm gonna start. So at the bottom of every flower, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna make these little kind of leaves coming out the bottom. And I'm gonna do that to all of them. Whatever direction I want that flower to be going in, that's where I'm gonna put them. And I just ran through a little bit of wet red and I'm okay with that. It just kind of adds to the, you know, authenticity of this being, you know, a nice natural painting and it takes on the colors that are next to it. And you could do a couple out the back side of it if you wanted to. And then I'm just going to keep going until I have all of these little pieces done. And then once I get these done, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my stems on, which are a real quick process. So again, green, yellow, and brown are what the colors I'm using right now. I'm just making sure I have some of these little leaves at the bottom of each bud so that way I have that, that solid base to them. And it's important you remember what direction your little bud was going in. This one's going to be, you know, and again, you, these bigger ones, maybe you've got some coming around the back. And then I've got one more up here. And then again, once I have this, now I've got to put stems on them. So I'm still just using green, yellow, and brown. And I'm going to kind of bring down my stems wherever I feel they should go. This one's going to go behind here. And they don't all have to come down super straight. You can have them coming off to the side. You know, whatever this one's going to be kind of a little cute one like that. This one's going to go right off my page. Maybe that one is too. And I'm just having fun right now, getting these stems to go wherever I want them to go. This is going to be a little tiny one. Now I'm going to do grass and leaves. So grass and leaves can come, the, the leaves can come right off of some of these flowers if you want them to. And this, I'm just kind of taking my brush and pushing it and flicking it, pushing and flicking. And I'm going to do green, yellow, brown for a whole bunch of pieces of grass in between here and coming up over and behind my, my flowers. I want this to really look natural. I don't want these to look like I just stuck these flowers on here all by themselves and they don't have wild grass growing behind them. I'm thinking of this. Yeah, I guess this could be a nice controlled garden type area. Um, but for me, I, I'm really into the wild side of nature and I like to have all of these um, pieces of growth just popping out all over the place. So I'm going to have some coming up over here. And I did say I was going to use white too. So once you have kind of all the pieces of grass and leaves and stuff that you feel are nice and representative and filling out your, your ground nicely. Now what I'm going to do, I did not wash my brush. I'm picking up white, yellow, and green. And this is going to add some really pretty, almost highlighted pieces of grass. You can also do it on some of the the um, leaves if you want to. But the reason why I kind of reserve this um, and do it as a last kind of step to this is because I don't want my um, my brush to get um, what, what I refer to as kind of muddy. Um, and I feel that when you have the brown on, you know, with the white on your brush, sometimes it can get away from you. Um, and you can start blending your colors a little bit too much. So that's why I just kind of wait until last to, to put these little pops of highlights with the white and the yellow and the green. Um, and then that way, I, it's more safe for me to do it that way. And if you feel like you, you know, you want to add some more brown into there, feel free to do so. Um, but right now I'm just kind of having fun making sure that this is nice and and bright for me again I, I did kind of keep the bottom part a little bit darker I might even go in with a touch of just brown into the bottom area just so that ends up looking like it is um, 
in the shadows kind of. So I just wiped my brush off on a paper towel and I'm just putting a couple of pieces of brown down at the bottom. And again, this is just adding a little bit of shadows, making it really have an, some nice dimension down here. And then when you feel like you have enough stems, leaves, um, pieces of grass, and you've got a nice representation of what you want this to be, we are going to use this same brush for the next step, but you're gonna wanna wash it and dry it. So once you get all this done, now I'm having a tough time stopping. Um, once you get all of this done, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for our butterfly. I'm gonna use my medium brush and the colors I'm using are white, yellow, and orange. And I'm gonna use all three colors on my brush at the same time, white, yellow, and orange. And you don't need a lot of paint on this step um, just because you're not doing a big area. So just, you know, no need to use a lot of paint. You can certainly practice this on a piece of paper too. I'm gonna to show you the basic shape, how I'm gonna do mine, and then of course you can certainly tweak this as you want. So I'm gonna do the side of the butterfly that's closest to us first. I'm gonna do the top wing. So I'm gonna start maybe somewhere here, and I'm gonna make myself that kind of mark. The next mark is gonna be something like that, that's the top wing. I'm gonna color it in with my color combination just so I don't have a distinct outline. I like to color it in while it's still kind of wet. And you can see I'm getting varying shades of white, yellow, and orange. I'm gonna reload my brush for the next wing here. This one's gonna be down below. And you can kind of have fun with these shapes. They don't have to be exactly as mine. That wing's a little bit darker, so I think I'm gonna bring a little bit of this dark orange up here. And then for the wing on the other side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right here, and I'm gonna make a similar line to this, only coming out in this direction. It's okay if you hit, um, a piece of grass or whatever, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna start right here, and I'm gonna bring this up. Maybe this is gonna go in front of this piece of grass. And then the trick to getting this side of the wing is you want it in a similar shape as that, but almost in a more narrow aspect, um, because this wing is kind of laying down and we're only seeing it at an angle. So again, I've got a little bit of paint on my brush. I'm gonna first copy this, the shape to that wing in, in a narrow fashion. So there's that one, and color it in real quick. And then this one back here is just gonna kind of be something like that. And again, this is meant to look like that's the other side of the wing and it's just kind of laying down. And that's all I'm gonna do for the first coat of my butterfly. So when you get done with that, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting the details on the rose petals. I'm gonna be using my medium round brush and I'm gonna be using a lot of colors here. The colors I'm using are white, yellow, red, orange and brown, so no purple or green. Um, my dominant color is obviously gonna be red because these are red flowers, um, but I'm gonna be using white, so I have some bright highlighted areas. The yellow is going to prevent me from making pink flowers, so I'm gonna be at times having red and white on my brush at the same time, and if I didn't counteract that was something, I'm, I would end up with a bunch of pink. Um, and I really like using this fluorescent orange to add a vibrant highlight. So that I just introduce every now and again. And what I'm gonna do with the brown, if I need to, is I can add shadows underneath the flower if I feel like that's not left dark enough. So how I'm gonna start these is I'm gonna start 
with white on my brush. So I'm going to take my white and every center of the flower to me represents kind of a spiral. So wherever I want the, the nucleus or where all those, those petals are coming out of, I start it with a kind of a spiral. So I'm going to show you this big one right here. So if I want all of my um, petals to kind of be opening from the center here, I'm going to start with this kind of spiral type motion. And then what I do is I'm going to just kind of take sporadic little white marks and make them the edges of the of the petals. So now that I've got my shape of my petals, now I can start introducing red, yellow, and orange. And I don't need this all to, to end up really white, white. This is just really meant to um, act as the highlights on that. And I'm putting more red on my brush here just to kind of accent these petals. And you can really work at this and kind of keep having fun with it. You're going to see as I go into the other flowers, you know, how it really makes a lot of sense to start with that white. Um, you can always paint over it. You can always reshape these edges. Um, but the white helps to give you that vibrancy underneath it. And if you needed to, at the base of the flower or in between petals, you can certainly add a little bit of, you know, the brown and or brown and red. And that's going to give you a really nice shadow at the bottom or in between some of these petals. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate some more. Um, again, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kind of wash my brush so I can get that spiral action started. And I'm going to do the whites on all of them. And then I'll come back and add the additional colors. But this one I just wanted to demonstrate for you. Um, some of these, you're not, it, the nucleus is not going to start there. If you've got kind of a half open bud here, you can start your spiral somewhere up in through here. And then you can kind of close off your, your petals over on the sides, something like that. You could, um, I've got this little one here. Maybe you don't even see the center of it. Maybe this is just a little kind of line like that that just shows one of these petals is kind of resting on the side. This one I've got a little nucleus up here. So I start with my little, and if you go outside of your original mark, that's okay. There's no, there's no rules against that. You can always make little um, additional petals. So if I wanted to add a little fluff out up at the top, you could certainly do that. I added red to my brush there. Kind of broke what I was saying I was going to do. I'm going to start with just white. I just put more white on my brush here. And again, I'm just kind of starting my, um, my petals with the white. It really makes it easy for me. Um, I've done these several times and this is my easiest way to start them and then I kind of create my petals again with, with the other colors. But this again helps me to start it and have a good base for it. This one there's not a whole lot of petals that are going to be showing on that one. This is just a little baby one over here, so maybe that's just going to be that opening. This one again, maybe I'll have this one go in here. Have some, some petals going in through here. And you can see as you know, as I'm getting towards these last couple, I, I end up going a little bit faster just because. I get into a groove. I think I want that one there. All right, so now that I've done that, now I'm going to start adding my red, yellow, and orange. So I didn't wash my brush, I just wiped it on a paper towel. So I still have all three kind of, I still have a little bit of white on there too. And now I'm just kind of going with the motion of where I had, where, where I had those white lines. And this is going to help me to 
add these beautiful highlights to it. And you don't have to cover up all that original red that's on there. This is just meant to be the edges of the, of the petals and it's meant to, to give you dimension in these flowers. So if you were to cover up all of that original um, reddish brown, you're gonna kind of defeat the purpose of having that on there in the first place. So that was meant to be a base coat. It was meant to give you a nice shadow underneath, um, underneath your, your petals or between your petals. Um, so you wanna maintain some of that deep color is still there by the time this step is, is through, which is why if you do go too bright, you can certainly um, come back with a little bit of brown at the end. Um, and I just, ooh, that was pretty. I just added a little bit of extra um, orange and yellow on my brush and got a couple of these pretty highlights at the top side of this. So now, of course, I've got to go at them everywhere. Um, sometimes I can't control my inner artist just kind of letting loose and having fun and letting happen what's going to happen. Um, you can see here I'm just kind of going in the same direction as those original petals that I did in white, only now I've got the additional colors on my brush. And I'm not covering it 100%. I'm just kind of going with the direction of those petals and adding these light colors or these lighter colors to that white are giving each individual petal its own kind of identity and its own space and it allows for you to see you know that there's you know 15 or 50 different petals on this one flower and they've each kind of intertwined with one another and they they give each other um, you know, they give each other their own space, I guess. And all the while, I'm still maintaining some of that darkness because I really want to make sure that you, you know, have the information that there is a dark area inside that flower. Um, and I probably, when I'm all said and done, once I get all these little petals on here, I'm probably going to dip my brush in the brown just to make sure that I have that real darkness um, at the bottom and in between the flowers. So once I get these nice and, and highlighted, which I'm kind of digging that. Of course, I can't go away until, I can't go into the dark until I've put as much light on here as I want. So I'm just, I just popped my brush in the, in the white without washing it just to get a couple of more little bright highlights on here. And again, you can see I'm just kind of floating around. I'm not really doing anything too um, invasive with this, with this white paint. I'm just really adding some tiny little pops of, of brightness and now I'm going to quickly wash and dry my brush and just make sure I've got as much darkness down at the bottom where these, um, where it meets the leaves. So I put a little bit more red and brown on my brush and just making sure I don't have any spots that, you know, are too light at the bottom. I definitely want to make sure that I've got some kind of what, I, you know, what to me looks like a shadowy area even if you want to put a little bit of shadow in those um, leaves that are down you know touching the bottom of the flower that's going to help with the illusion that this is you know we've got dimension here and when you have this step all done we are going to switch brushes to your tiny brush so once you feel like you've got enough darkness at the bottom of these flowers and you've got enough beautiful highlights on top of the flowers, you can take this medium brush and you'll put it away in your water cup and you're gonna take out your tiny brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for this step is we are finishing our butterfly. I'm using my small brush and I'm gonna be using brown, purple, 
and I'm not sure what other colors. Maybe white, maybe some yellow, maybe some orange, um, but definitely brown and purple are gonna be my dominant colors. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna put a, oh, and I'm using my small brush, don't know if I said that. I'm starting with brown, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a dark mark at the top of each one of these wings and at the top of this wing. So I don't use a lot of paint, um, and you can really decorate these butterflies whatever way you want, but this is how I'm gonna to choose to do mine. So I've got a little bit of brown paint on my brush, and I'm almost kind of outlining the little tip of this, and I don't want a lot of paint on my brush, so I just wiped it on my paper towel, and then I just kind of rub it in, as, as if it's almost like fading into the butterfly. And I'm gonna do that with all the wings. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again up in this little corner here. So I kind of outline, and then I'm just gonna kind of rub my brush and get that brown to fade in. I want this one to be a little bit darker to re resemble that one, so I'm adding just a touch more brown to my brush. I don't know if my hand's in the way or not. I'm trying to keep it out of the way for you to see. There we go. And then, oops, just put my hand in some wet white paint. All right, so that's pretty representational of that one. And then I'm gonna do the top of this one. I just reloaded my brush with a little bit of brown. I'm gonna kind of outline the tip of that. You can have it come down a little bit to make those separate a little bit. And then I'm going to take a little bit of purple. Again, just a tiny, tiny bit. I want a little bit of a purple area on my wing. So again, I'm just kind of blending it into that brown. And you could decorate this with polka dots. You could decorate it with stripes. There's so many different variations and varieties of butterflies. This is really a, a personal preference. Um, so have fun with it. These, these wings can be translucent. You can see through them almost like dragonfly wings if you want to. Um, so it's really, you know, you could make it into a monarch, monarch butterfly or even a lunar moth or, you know, there's so many variations that you could do. But now that you've got the idea of how to do the basic shape um, and how to get it so it looks like one side, you know, and the inside and the outside, you can certainly change up the variety there. I think I am gonna add a little bit of white and yellow just so I can kind of enhance the center here. So I just put a little bit of white and yellow on my brush. And again, this is just visually what I'm choosing to do. You can certainly modify yours in whatever way you want. And I noticed that I missed a brown spot up there to make it resemble that, so I'll do that in a second. And then I'm going to take, I'm just going to kind of touch a teeny tiny spot there, because this is meant to be that one only on that side. Now I'm going to take just brown to do the body. Um, I don't like my bodies to be overwhelmingly large, so I'm gonna have my head come out just a little bit past this point and the body, it's gotta detach from the wings a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of start here. I'm just using brown and I'm just gonna make kind of a long, um, narrow um, mark. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna do a couple of um, antennas. I know that a butterfly has two antennas. I'm gonna put some legs too, but I, I don't know how many legs I'm supposed to put, so let's just put my antennas first while I'm trying to digest how many legs I'm supposed to put. Um, and you might find that you want to use a smaller brush for these. Uh, my trick is just don't press hard um, and kind of just go quick with it. Um, I'm going to put a couple of little legs as if it's landing. So I'm just going to put maybe one, two, three, four. I'm going to go with four. <laughs> I don't know how many there's supposed to be. Um, but 
that is gonna, I think I want a little bit larger head too. Um, that's gonna conclude that step. And again, you can have fun with this. You can decorate it whatever way you want. We do have one little step to go and it's gonna be with this small brush. So when you get your butterfly all nice and beautiful, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we're on to the last step, which is to sign your painting. Um, I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna use brown paint. I usually sign one in the bottom left or the bottom right. Uh, I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom right. I'm gonna sign mine with my initials. You can sign yours with whatever you want. Some people put the date. Some people put their, you know, their full name. I just put my initials. But this, again, is your painting. You sign it whatever way you want to. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>